So let's start looking at some of the colors here. We can start with the packaging, I think. So let's start with the shape. And do something like this. Use this as a mask. Let's create two colors. Let's move these guys out of the way. Let's set some colors and we could use this uh, Can actually just move these guys over here and make it easier. Pick some colors from this NVIDIA logo over here. So we'll use their green. And then we can use this bluish color. And then we can dial in with this. Yeah, something like that. <clears throat> and here we can, for optimization sake, we can set this one to relative to parent, and then we can just make these absolute, and then just make them 16 by 16. one relative to parent so this one stays 2k and these guys are 16. And let's blend another color on here we'll do the same here relative to parent we'll grab another color and we'll want to get just some kind of like metallic looking color Grab the logo from all the way over here. And we'll do absolute and no tiling here. Let's put it where it looks interesting. We can put it over there. Now we can shift this guy over. Yeah, something like that. We can start playing a little bit with the roughness as well. Let's move this little chocolate bit out of the way. And we have the metallic. Let's take these guys and just move them down so we have more space here. Can make the logo metallic. Keep this little floater around here. Can add these uh, hexagon shapes. Do a 
Instagram, not range. I try to scan. I can blur this one a tiny bit. Mm, that's kind of cool. We can blend this. We can take our logo here and Let's subtract that. Now this part is super shiny and also the logo. And we can also play around with the positioning here, how shiny or non-shiny this part is. It's nice when there's some little bit of con contrast there. And actually, let's just do that. So I want to just control how shiny that logo is. Do the same here. Oops. And on this guy, we set this one to relative to parent and this value to 16 by 16. Now when I use this as a mask, I can control with this value just exactly how shiny that part is. When I use subtract this way, I can't really, I can just say how much this one is subtracting and not the exact value. So maybe we do the same here, actually. Clone this value. Looks kind of cool. If we go down here, we can take this mask where we subtract, you know, we have the packaging shape and we subtract this part. Uh, we can actually go in and do a slope blur here. Take this mask and like add a a cloud or a pearly noise or something like that. Let's do a cloud. We can like downsample this so it's a little more uh, blurry. And then we can set this one to max, which means it's it's taking the values from this and pushing them out. If I switch this one to min, it's pushing it in the words instead. Also do a little bit of blur on this.
I'll do a histogram scan just to sharpening that mask up. <clears throat> We'll blend this onto the metallic. We'll just uh, add that on there. So now you see, like along this edge here, we're getting this kind of like metallic detail. But we still need to hook it up to colors and everything. And we can also move this one slightly inward so we always get a metallic edge and up here where we add the logo we can actually instead use this mask And where we'll add the logo here for the metallic, we just add the same mask here. So everywhere where we have this metallic material, we have the same kind of specular values and everything. We can do a non-uniform blur on this. Oops, that was the wrong node. Non-uniform blur grayscale is what we want. And we take this one and this one. Just to get a little bit of edge on it. And we'll subtract the original one there. We can make this into a normal. We'll make it very soft. And we can use the normal combine node to just have this show up a little bit in the normal. We can set this one to also high quality. We can set it to to go down and we can dial in the I uh, don't want to do that, I think. I want to do... I want to blend this with a normal color, just flat normal color. I want to use this mask there. That way we get this uh, broken edge on here, but not on any of the chocolate, just on this, just on the packaging. Yeah, you see that edge there, that's what we're going for here. Sometimes you can get interesting results just by playing around with these. Yeah, that looks alright. So what I have to do here is just hook up the chocolate here. Give us a bit more space here. And do a blend and put this one here. And 
And then what we need to do here is make a mask out of this. So we'll use histogram scan on the packaging part. We'll hook that up like that, and then just select this and control click that and hit X. And we need to use the same mask for uh, for our metallic map here. So we'll add a blend here. We use the same mask, but here we set it to multiply. And then here on roughness, we'll just reuse the same mask again, but then we'll hook up our old chocolate stuff here. And here we can do the same optimization trick where we set this one to relative to parent, set this guy to absolute 16 by 16, same as this 16 and 16. And it seems like we just need to flip those, that order again. Packaging. And then, yeah, with the chocolate. And now when I tweak the roughness value here, this is the caramel, I guess, yes. You can dial all those values in individually. A good little trick that I use here, I add comments here. We can say this one is caramel. And this one is and then you go through all these nodes and just add uh the names of sort of what they are. And there we go, our final little uh, NVIDIA chocolate project, uh, fully built in Substance Designer.